the humble bee, a sure sign of summer here in Canada and one of the key barometers of our planet's health. Bees pollinate almost one third of the food we eat, a contribution said to be worth $2 billion annually to this country's canola and fruit producers. Yet this vital insect is facing a dire crisis. 35% of Canada's honeybee colonies have died out in the last three years alone. And with many pointing the finger at growing pesticide use, Colin Butler takes a closer look at a disaster in the making. No bees, no fruit. Sign the petition, save the bees. This is reality, folks. Wake up. David Shewitt is a man on a mission. Save the bees, save your kids. At his market stall in St. Jacobs, Ontario, he's not just selling honey, he's trying to get people sweet on an idea. That neonicotinoids, a type of pesticide used to protect grain from pests, is killing bees. Thank you, my friend. One by one, they sign a petition. It asks the Ontario government to ban a pesticide that's believed to be responsible for the mass deaths of bees across North America. It's been described as the bee apocalypse. There's a handful of bees, dead bees. And it's happening to David Shewitt's bees. We see that they're sick. You can see on, on these bees here, the wings look very healthy. You can see that there's no mites been affecting them. If there was lots of mites, they would have the wings chewed up. I wish I knew what I could do to help them. They've been poisoned. We believe it's the neonicotinoids. And the reason why I'm saying the neonicotinoids is because last year we lost a well over 37 million bees. And um, of all the testing, on 80% of the dead bees had the neonicotinoids on them. Neonicotinoid was introduced a decade ago. Farmers buy seeds for corn, soy and canola coated with the chemical. Once the pesticide lays seeds start to grow, the chemical becomes part of the plant. Farmers argue it not only protects the plant, it boosts crop yields and even keeps food prices low. While studies suggest it has no effect on humans, the chemical is deadly to pest insects. But Shewitt thinks it's also making his hives sick. There's only a few bees here. This should be like an air traffic, just in and out, in and out, in and out. The losses are bad. Now, this is one of the highest that have been many affected in this yard here. You can see there's not many bees, but there's no honey in here. There's nothing there. And his finances are as ragged as his hives. Shewitt sold his family's organic farm to keep his honey business alive. Now he, his wife Erica, and their seven children live above this honey processing facility. For a businessman, it's a tough decision. For a father, it's something else entirely. When you have a six-year-old kid rubbing your back, trying to cheer up dad, you say, son, I don't know what to say. I don't know what else to do. Shewitt hopes a petition from the Ontario Beekeepers Association might put the pressure on government. Right now, there are few restrictions on how farmers use neonicotinoids in Canada or the U.S. In Europe, a temporary ban takes effect this winter, so researchers can further study the pesticide. Environmentalists call that a victory. The independent tests um, have over the years started to show that there's enough cause for concern that, that bees and other pollinating insects are potentially affected by the universal use of these chemicals and the intensive use of these chemicals on uh, all manner of crops. Here in Canada, the government is moving more slowly. In Ontario, the Premier has appointed an expert panel to study the problem. In the meantime, the Canadian government is allowing its continued use. It wants more research on the chemical, even though some studies suggest neonicotinoids are doing more harm than good. They died in the spring, and now they're dying again from the pollen. And this continues. I see a year, maybe two years, I don't know. Bees have been described as the glue that holds our agricultural system together. And few can imagine what would happen if that glue disappeared. But some are starting to get an idea. It's kind of sad, to be honest. Meet 15-year-old Ruth Orlotzi Goodison. She and her mother had to take pollination into their own hands this year. It takes a long time because each one of the apples on this tree 
came from a flower on this tree. Using a paintbrush, she and her mother hand pollinated 50 fruit trees on this hobby farm just outside of Cambridge, Ontario, because the wild bees that normally do the job didn't show up this year. They just aren't around. They aren't flying, they aren't buzzing, you aren't seeing them in flowers. She says something that's always been there is easy to take for granted until it's gone. It's really creepy. It's like, it's not an absence you notice unless you're looking for it. David Shewitt shares that feeling, not from seeing, but from hearing a world without bees. It'll be a sound of hollowness. It'll be a sound of emptiness. Every hive is a factory. Without that sound, it's a very lonely world. Colin Butler, CBC News, Elmwood, Ontario.